everyone, this is Gail from Gail Julie Makes and I hope you're all doing really well. I'm here with a beautiful Lavinia Stamps tutorial. Um, this is the card we're going to be making today with the lovely Luna Fairy. We've also got the beautiful Berry Reef Stamp and the Ducks and the Mini Castle. So I'm going to take you through a list of the products that we need for this card. But don't worry if you miss anything, they're all in the description below. First of all, we're going to need the uh, Mini Castle, which is one of the great value stamps that Lavinia produce. We've also got the lovely Luna herself and the Duck Stamp. I love flying ducks, they look so cool. And then we've got the Berry Reef stamp, which actually contains one of my favourite little stamps there, those berries. They are great as a filler and can cover up things like fingerprints, so they're a perfect little stamp. We're also going to need the um, Elements um, ink Blue Lagoon. Now this is a lovely ink, it's very juicy, um, it uh, can be manipulated by water and we're going to be using that today on the gel plate to produce a beautiful background. Um, Blue Lagoon I think is perfect for the sky, there is another colour called Mermaid which is better for seascapes I think but Blue Lagoon I think makes a perfect sort of sky scene. We've also got Distress Oxide in Broken China and the Versifying Clairs, I've got Monarch, I've got Twilight, uh, Medieval Blue, um, Nocturne and Warm Breeze. Okay and um, we will also be needing a blender. And I've got a stencil brush here as well to show you. Um, we've got um, on each corner we have the stencil in effect and we're using the Flourish stencil by Lavinia today. We're also going to be using um, a couple of acetate masks. Now you can get these from the Lavinia stamp shop but I wanted particular sizes so I've made my own. And we've also got a paper mask to create that sort of hillside effect. I've just used torn paper for that one. We've got some 7x7 carb, which is 300 GSM. I do like to use multifarious, but I really wanted to use an actual card for this piece. And we have got our 6-inch round gel press printing plate. Okay, we've also, um, we're going to be needing oh, our brushos. And I've got my brusho made up there, so I'll show you how I make up my brusho later on in the video. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of 7x7 card and place it under the 6 inch round gel plate. And that is basically just for a guide for myself. When I want to um, pop my card over the top to lift the ink off the plate, I want to make sure I'm getting it centred in the middle. So I put the 7x7 inch uh, card underneath so I can line my other card up with that. Otherwise... When I've tried to do it without a guide, it's been a disaster. It's never been in the centre. So um, it's a really good tip if anybody's struggling with that. So I'm getting the um, the element sink to use to put onto my gel plate. You could use the Distress Oxide. It produces a slightly different effect. I like the fact that the element sink is really juicy though. So I'm getting that onto my blender. And I'm just going to start dabbing that around the edge of my plate. Now obviously when we're dabbing around the edge of our plate with the ink it means that we're going to get um, an edge in that is very defined. If you don't want a defined edge don't go right up to the edge of your plate. So um, the, the more you've got ink you've got on your blender as well the deeper the colour is going to be. So you can see now I'm naturally leaving a bit of a gap in the middle. This is to provide a little bit of a space for our moon or it might be a sunshine in your picture, a sun in your picture. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just dabbing off now on my plastic matting so I've got a colour on the whole plate but this middle area is a lot lighter so it's going to provide us that perfect space for, for the moon and I'm just going around a little bit around the edges just to get that defined area a little bit more Uh, you can also produce a nice watercolour with this element sink actually. I've got a little bit left over in the lid there. If you to add water with a paintbrush it would be like a watercolour and you can use that on some of these stamps to bring out the, the colouration a little bit more. It works really well. So now I've got my fan brush and I'm just flicking uh, water droplets on there. It's not brush though, it's just water. So if you want small droplets you can tap off your brush on your water container. That will give you smaller droplets because you've not got as much water on your brush. If you want more um, more water on there and bigger drops, then don't tap it off. So I'm just covering all of my plate there because I want that nice sort of like splurgy effect all over. Okay, and now I'm going to get my 7x7 inch card and 
and I'm going to place that on top. Oh, I'm just checking what it came, just showing you what it came out like on the original. And then I am going to place it over the top, lining it up with that card underneath, remember. So we want to make sure it's straight, just straightening it up. And then we're placing it and we're going to give it a really gentle rub. And then we'll see what we get as a result when we peel it off. I always love this part. So exciting, you don't know what you're going to get. And there we go, lovely colour. We've got a little bit of ink that I'm just rubbing in there because it's just uh, still a bit damp. And there we go, slightly different coloration. This one seems a bit darker, but that's fine. And what I'm going to do is make sure I go and dry that now so we get ready to stamp. But um, beautiful colour and uh, we'll see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, we're back and we're dry. Looks really nice. I'm really pleased with this. I've got that lighter area in the middle there that we wanted. Um, it's just to show you what this ink can do, really. That is literally just the one ink and some water droplets. And look at all the depth that we've got on that picture just by flicking a few uh, drops of water on there. Beautiful. While I was off camera as well, I decided to um, do a bit of a mop up for my gel plate. So this is the result. So I've just basically placed another sheet of card on top rather than wiping the excess ink off with paper towel. It gives a really nice effect. So never waste anything. You can use that for a card. So I'm happy that I've got that lighter area in the middle. I think this has dried really well. And we're ready to start our stenciling all the way around the edge. So I'm going to be using the Flourish stencil for this area around the edge here. So I'm grabbing that now and I'm going to just line it up. I uh, want to do the corners and up the sides as well. I want to make sure I've not got that block effect at the side there um, from the edging of the stencil. So I was originally going to use my stencil brush, which is great for doing big areas that are really crisp and pristine. But I decided I was going to use my blender in the end because that's what I used in the original one. So I will show you um, show you my stencil technique now. So I'm getting some Distress Oxide on my um, blender and I'm just dabbing a bit off onto the plastic sheeting. And then I'm going to go in from the edges over my stencil. Now there will be um, you know, some areas that are darker than others, that's absolutely fine. Um, I think that's the beauty. What I'm doing here is I'm not going all the way up to the edge of the circle because I want to make sure that I've got room to put some pure colour around there that I can then manipulate with water. So I'm just going to go around the edge and up the sides there and leave that gap. So what I'll do is I will uh, speed this up for you in a second. Another thing I wanted to mention quickly was that... Um, manipulate your stencil so what I did was I was looking for the direction of the buds and the leaves and wanted to make sure it looked like it was creeping around the edge so sometimes I will move my stencil around to get that effect or turn it the opposite way around so just have a look at your stencil and see how you can manipulate it Right, we're back. We've done our stenciling. So next job is to get that um, extra colour around the edge of the circle that I then want to manipulate with some water. So I'm just going to use my Distress Oxide again. And that is Broken China. Now my dabber, or uh, well my blender, is a bit dirty. So we don't necessarily get that, that pure colour. Um, so I was just trying a, a different one out there, but I need to buy some new blenders. They're all grubby. <laughs> just another excuse to do an order, isn't it? So um, I'm going to use a mask over the top of the circle just so I'm not getting too much of the oxide onto that original Element Sink Blue Lagoon. So I'm just giving it a rub around the edge. It's going to be manipulated with water so I'm not too worried about sort of how much I'm getting on there. It doesn't matter if it's a bit a bit thicker than I want because I know I will be blending it anyway with the water. Just 
pointing out there that I've gone over. Um, well, I've got a little white area I'm going to cover there. If you do go over a little bit with the um, the oxide, it's not a problem because you will be using more inks on your um, circle while well, your main sort of focus in the middle anyway. So you can cover up any areas you're not 100% not happy with. I was actually quite pleased with this colour in the end, even though it's a bit of a mishmash. Sometimes you can get some lovely colours sort of by mistake. So, you know, just go with the flow on these things. It doesn't matter if it's not the exact colour that you, you thought it was when you were, you know, picking it from your, your ink selection. I recently made this card actually for my mother-in-law um, and... Um, don't tell her, but I think this one's actually turning out a little bit prettier already with the coloration. So uh, she hasn't got any technology, so she won't be able to see this, bless her, but I'm sure she'll appreciate the uh, the sentiment. Okay, so make sure you put your lid on your inks as well each time you're using them. I'm, I've, I'm always really paranoid about that. I want to make sure I've got my lids on my ink before I leave the, the art room. Okay, and I'm going to go in with that paintbrush. Just got a bit of water on my paintbrush and I'm blending it in. And it, it just looks really pretty um, how it sort of blends naturally into the, the stencil work that you've done. Okay, so that's dry now. So I've started on the stamping. So I've got Luna on my clear block and I'm using Nocturne to ink her up. Now this stamp is a little bit sticky from me not cleaning it properly, so it's my own fault, but um, I do put extra ink on there just to make sure that I'm going to get a clear print. I don't expect to get a completely clear print. I haven't done with this one recently, but I have got a way to fix it if needed. So don't worry, I'll show you that method in a minute. So I'm just going to try and line it up correctly. So I'm checking my original picture here. I'm just thinking, just just making sure I know where I'm popping my branch, the edge of my branch. So I'm making sure everything is in the circle, including the wings. Just lining it up. And then because we have got things on our card, um, like the element sink and the water, when I press it down, I will hold it there for a few seconds just to let the ink sink in. So, you know, just give it a bit of time. doesn't need long, but it just, just helps out that bit more. She really is a beautiful stamp. I haven't actually got many of the fairies, but out of the ones I do have, she's definitely my favourite. So if you haven't already got Luna, I think I think she's going to have to be one on your wish list. Okay, so pressing her down. Main areas I want to focus on are I definitely want the wings to be captured correctly and um, like the areas around the edge of her face because they are really tricky to fill in if you need to. So I've just been pressing down on those um, a little bit more than some of the other areas as well. So we'll pull it off and we'll see what we get. Fingers crossed. Please, please, please let the wings come out. <laughs> okay. Moment of truth. I think we're going to pull it off. There we go. And there is a little bit of an area that um, hasn't taken as well. So I will show you my technique on how to sort that out. Um, I've got a paintbrush that I use solely for this. Um, and I never put water on it. And I just use, my, I use it on my Nocturne ink. Give it a bit of a brush on there. And then you can transfer that directly with your paintbrush to your stamp. Now, you know, you've got to be careful with this. You've got to be quite accurate. Uh, you can also use a Stabilo or Stabilo all, pen, all A-double-L pencil for this. Um, but I tend to use, to use the ink that I've, I've actually stamped it with. So I'll whiz this on a little bit, guys, so you don't have to watch this really in real slow motion. And I'll get back to you. Now, some of you may just decide to use a stamping platform and completely skip out this stage. It's entirely up to you, but I just tend to like using this technique. Okay, so now we're going to think about how we do the moon. So I'm going to use uh, my small mask 
Um, now what I'm doing is just wiping off the ink that I used from last time because it's acetate. It can hold that ink still if you don't clean it. So I don't want to make, don't want to get any ink on my moon area. So I'm just putting my moon over the sort of light area. I want to make sure I've got a good proportion of the wings from Luna in there as well. And uh, so I'm just placing it carefully. Now, for this particular piece, I'm going to be using my blender and my Monarch Versifying Claire. So I'm just finding that now. Um, the purple, it's a lovely purple colour, this one. It really, um, really brings out the blue in this picture really well as well. So I'm just dabbing a bit of my ink off. And then I'm going to use the acetate as well to get a bit of my ink off. And I'm just brushing upwards and outwards. So if you're, if you're doing a sun, you're almost imagining you're doing the sun's rays. You're going in those directions. And like I say, it's, it's, uh, you can get some of that ink off on your acetate as you're moving because you can always add more ink. It's difficult to take it off because obviously the Versafine Claire is a more permanent ink. Um, so it's difficult to take it off if you're not happy with it, but it's always easy to keep adding more and more. So I'm just going around the edge of the mask there. I'm trying not to get um, too much of the uh, of Luna's details with the actual ink because obviously, it, especially with inks like oxides, if you actually get it on the um, the Versafine Claire, it can sort of dull down the colour a little bit. So I'm just going all the way around there. And there we go. I think that moon has come out really well, actually. Now, like I said, you could use water to pull out the colour on that moon, um, which is what I did with the original. But I decided at this point I liked the moon as it was, so I wasn't going to dab any extra water over the top. But you can do that by all means if you think yours needs it. So um, next stage is I'm going to stamp the ducks. Now, you could have put the yellow brush show on the moon first. I think that's what I did first time round. But um, I would decided to stamp it first this time. So we're going to use the Nocturne again for the ducks. And they just look they just look so subtle. Um, but they're, 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 it's a perfect little stamp, really. You can use it in so many ways. So I'm getting, minking up the ducks there. Okay. Making sure I've got them right, the right way around. And there we go. Yeah. And they don't need too long to sink in. It's um, it's a simple, it's a fairly simple stamp. So there we go. And um, the next stage is I'm going to go in with my yellow brusho. Come to that in a second. Yeah, here we go. So. Looking at my original picture, that's the yellow brusho in the middle. In the middle there, so I'm just going to use my part of brusho. All I that's how I place my brusho. I just put a bit tip, the tip of the palette knife. I put a little bit of the brusho powder, and then I pop it in my pot and mix it with water. So you only need a very small amount of brusho to get this effect. And then I'm just twisting my fan brush inside, and I'm going to start flicking it on. So I do use the. Uh, the piece of uh, paper towel as a bit of a guide so the ink the sorry the brusho doesn't go everywhere i don't really want to get um luna too much so i'm just covering her up there now again it's like before if you tap off your, your brushos um before you flick them you're going to get the smaller droplets if you want bigger droplets you're going to have to make sure there's more more water and brusho on your on your actual brush so I had a mixture of both here and what you can do with this is if you dab at the brusho with your paper towel you will get a lighter a lighter effect with your brusho if you leave it to dry naturally it will produce that sort of darker yellow that we can see in the picture now so you can see the top part I've dabbed off looks very light I wanted to retain some of those darker colours, so I'll go in, I'll um, heat set it, and it will be darker. And there's our finished result with the brusho. It's all dry now, so we're ready to continue our stamping. Okay, so next stamp I'm going to use is my uh, Mini Castle. Such a pretty stamp, this one. What I tend to do is kind of... Um, 
build it up so I'm not just using that one print I'll print again next to it to make it form into a bigger castle as you can see here um, I will also use second generation inks that will involve me stamping off the ink I've got to, to give you that lighter colour then it looks like the, um, the spires of the castle are disappearing into the background so I think this one up in twilight and I'm just doing my first stamp there and uh, then I'm inking up again and what I'm going to do is rub off the side section so I can just use one element of the stamp to extend my original stamp in so it's looking like it's a, a bit a bigger castle then I'm going to ink up again I'm going to stamp off this time and do second generation stamp so our spires look like they're disappearing into the background work well and I'm going to do another one just going to ink up stamp off and give it a little bit of an extra rub and just do another spire in the middle of the back there and there we've got our castle elements just another bit there and I'm not worried about the fact that I've got um, gaps at the bottom because I'm going to use my mask to uh, join them all together so we're going to use twilight again on our blender and I'm actually bringing the um, blender down from the mask to give us a crisp line. If we blended from the top of the mask up, it would give us quite a blurry line. So I'm just blending downwards for that really crisp line. And you'll see when I take the mask off that it's got a nice sort of crisp line there. Now I'm going to add the detailing in later for the um, the lights and things in the castle so I'll show you that. I'm just finishing off a bit there so happy with that castle. And the next step we're going to move on to is the um, stamping of the berry reef. Now this is a beautiful stamp. I'm going to leave it whizzed on a little bit for you because um, obviously we know we know about stamping but just to let you know that this is like a left and right stamp because it's a reef it forms a circle. So I'm going to do on the right hand side I'm going to stamp up in twilight which is what I'm doing now and they are the slightly smaller berries because each of the reef sides are sort of slightly different sizes which is a nice effect. So this is the twilight stamping and one thing I like to do as I'm stamping is I like to make sure that um, it doesn't look like it's floating in midair. So the ends of that stamp, um, the very sort of fine branch at the end, I will make sure I cover up with um, some of the berries just to sort of make sure it looks like it's, you know, it's complete and it's not just floating. OK, so now I'm just showing you the little stamp that you get in the collection with the berry reef. So I'm just doing... Um, do some second generation stamping here which I think really adds depth to it and I did this on both sides eventually so I was doing twilight on the right and nocturne on the left and now I've skipped it on a bit I am now colouring in um, Luna's wings so I'm using the star I think it's starburst it might be stardust uh, sakura jelly roll pen I will put a link to that below so you know exactly which one it is and I'm just doing a bit of light colouring on the wings. This gives you a really nice shimmery effect. And I'm also going to do this down um, the side of Luna's face and her arm and the branch as well. So it looks like the, the light from the moon is shining down on her. So I thought I'd leave this one in just a little bit slower so you can see, see how this was done. And if you can hear a noise in the background, that is my cat purring. She's just snuck into the room, so <laughs> I think she's been missing me. Okay, and I'll just try and show you that in the light. There we go, you can just about see that. So it doesn't look like much when you're doing it, but it does produce a really nice shimmery effect. Okay, next job then is to add the detail into the castle windows. Um, so I'm using the white Sakura jelly roll pen now and what I'm doing is I'm going to find my acetate from my um, stamp and I'm going to use that as a guide to see where the lights naturally fall don't know if you can hear that cat purr but we've got a very happy cat now she's uh, managed to get back on my lap 
I bet a lot of people have this same. If you do have this, this happen to you, uh, drop leave us a message in the comments below. Um, do you have a pet? I've seen lots of pictures online. Do you have a pet that likes to, you know, stop you doing your art because they want more fuss? Right, I'm happy with the castle now then. Uh, I feel like this is finished apart from the edging. We need to um, just put some VersaFine Claire around the edge and I am going to use Nocturne for this. Just feel like it draws the attention into the centre a little bit by having that, that border, basically. So I'm going to use Nocturne. You might pick a different colour. It would work just as well, I think, with um, Twilight or maybe Warm Breeze or Medieval Blues. Personal choice. And I'm just going in from the edges, just blending in um, really gently and not taking it too far out into the picture. Okay, and that is the finished piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare them side by side. So I'm going to bring in the original card. Um, as you can tell, there is some slight coloration difference, but I think they both look beautiful and will be a lovely card to give to anyone. So really pleased with those. I think the moon might look a little bit better on the one on the right hand side that we did today. I don't know what your thoughts are. If you want to leave me a comment below to let me know. Um, and then I'll, I always love to read them and I'll get back to you on those as well. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and that'll help spread it across YouTube a bit more. And I just wanted to say um, a huge thank you today to all of those people that have already subscribed to the channel. Just reached a landmark. I've just gone past 600, which is so amazing. Thank you so much for all your support. I started this channel during lockdown. It's a very small channel. I do want to continue to grow and grow. It's a, a form of escapism for me, basically. Um, I'm back to my teaching job. I teach primary school children, so um, it is hectic and I don't always get time to upload as often as I'd like, but it does mean the world to me, guys. Honestly, thank you so much. If you haven't already subscribed, if you click my profile picture top left there and then hit the bell and all notifications, it'll let you know whenever I've got a new video out. So I do the video tutorials, I do a lot of gel plate videos and I love experimenting with alcohol inks at the minute. So there'll be more of that going on. And bottom left there is another video that I think you might like. So please do go check that out and have a great week crafting, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.